uh, the whole presentation that I give on, on what, what is the proper data warehouse, but that's not it. And when you try to build reporting solutions off of that, of course, you're going to have a lot of performance issues. You're going to have a lot of problems that are solved by a properly built data warehouse. So a lot of what I do is going into a client and cleaning up their mess. And, and it's always rebuilding, completely rebuilding from scratch your data warehouse because what they have is just not working. And the third one I usually hear is, we built a data warehouse. We've got all these SSR reports on there, and it still sucks. We, we're having performance issues. We, their data warehouse may be pretty close to what is optimal, but they didn't understand the reporting needs of the user. They, they just think yeah, they use SSRS as the only tool, and, and nobody's using it because it's not giving them anything more than they already had. In fact, it's probably worse because of the performance issues with the reporting. So how do we avoid all this? Well, and this is what they use, they please help us in, in fixing or, or implementing a current solution. So to have a proper BI and data warehouse solution, and I say data warehouse and BI because every BI app, um, project should have a data warehouse component in there. So they're really interchangeable. And data warehouse is just, it's just a part, of an overall part of the BI solution, but it's the major part of it. So the reasons why I've seen them fail, these, these have all applied to numerous clients I've been at, is, well, first off, there's, Gartner came out with a survey that shows this many projects fail. Um, and, and I, from my own experience, I'd probably say this is, this is pretty accurate. So, uh, being that a lot of times companies will fail and do it again, and then they'll, they'll succeed eventually, but it may take two or three iterations. But a lot of times in these clients I've seen, like I said, it's coming in there and cleaning up so that they've really failed and then they're bringing in somebody to help them um, be successful. The, the, the biggest issue that I put first is uh, I've talked to a lot of ex executives who think BI is, is really easy. Oh, this should take you a, a month or two to, to, to do a complete BI solution because they don't really understand what BI is and they think it's, again, just putting access report off of certain uh, databases. Well, that's not it. You need to have an executive who really understands it's, it's a long-term commitment to it and it's not easy. And, it, and if you go in there and they have that attitude that it's easy and, and you're, you're taking months to deliver a numerous solutions are there, you're going you're to lose them. Uh, starting with an end date and working backwards, uh, a lot of times I'll go in there and I'll say, yeah, this full data warehouse integrated with sources is going to take six months. And I'll say, that's great, but you got three months. And we want to then to cut out all these scope, cut the scope out and all these features in there. And that's always a recipe for disaster because I see shortcuts being made. And especially when there's consultant companies come in there and they want to please the clients so, and they don't push back and they just start cutting out things. And I've seen people cut out data cleanup. We don't, we'll, we don't have time to do data cleanup and it's just, you're going to pay for it in the end. So you really need to push back if you're given a strict deadline. and and you can change the scope, but you can't skip a lot of steps. Changing the scope maybe reduce the number of sources, but you can't just start chopping things out of, out of your project plan. Lack of user involvement is a huge um, way to fail. You need, from the very beginning, to get all the business users involved. You need to get them excited about them. You need to get their input. You need to feel like they are part of the solution. And if you do that, you're much more likely to have them have complete buy-in. And when you come out with a solution, if you have ignored them, they're going to look at the solution and they're going to pick out problems with it. If you involve them, then they're going to feel like they've had a, a piece of designing that and they're going to champion that. And they're going to say, this is great. And they're going to tell other people on that. The way to do that is to have a lot of user interaction, a lot of communication with them, a lot of getting them involved in designing and building the solution. Business requirements. You don't want to take too much time creating business requirements. You don't want to do a waterfall approach where you're spending three to six months just designing it before you even start coding it. Um, so you don't want to, and you also don't want to do too little. You just don't want to jump in there without any business requirements and start creating something. Uh, I've seen both ends of the spectrum and they, and they almost always fail. So there's a happy medium in there and you need to understand that. And it usually involves creating a uh, a business requirements enterprise level and then reducing 
your next phase of, to one of those particular subjects and do the business requirements from that. Business requirements can take two or three weeks. You don't have to spend a lot of time on there. Um, so it, it's just important to find that, that middle ground. The same thing goes with architect and design. I, I've seen clients that spend months architecting on a solution. And as the months go by and you're architecting out, requirements change. Things happen in the company, mergers happen, and now your architecture may already be outdated. Same thing happens when you do requirements. So you can't spend a lot of time. And, and also the issue is because it's, it's such a new thing, you, you can't get a lot of requirements or architecture out of the business users because they've never done this before. They don't, until they see something, they don't really quite understand what it's all about. And so you can do all this requirements architecture until they see it. Once that happens, they may totally change the direction and the scope because they realize the capabilities of it. So you can't spend too much time on that. On the other hand, you just can't quickly design an architecture. I've seen too many clients just kind of quickly design an architecture and off they go without looking at the overall picture. And you may integrate a couple of sources now and it may work fine in the architecture you have, but you really need to think of all the different sources that are available because you want to make sure you can support them down the road as, as the project grows. Uh, poor communication is, is another big issue. As I said, you want to get the users involved in there, and the best way to do that is communicate. You don't want to be a consulting on site and you're just sitting in your corner doing, doing the project and not providing a lot of feedback. People love to have communication. Again, they'll feel like they're part of the solution. You need to, as much as as consultants don't like, or any of us like doing documentation and status reports, uh, it's become very important to the, the people involved in the BI projects. So you have to make sure there's a lot of communication. You can, you can, there's a lot of things you can do with your meetings to keep them short, and, but, and the same with your email, your status reports, but avoiding it is, gonna, is a recipe for disaster. Building has to say is cube. So once we get the data warehouse built and we uh, create some data marts and we're building cubes and there are a lot of mistakes I see is somebody tries to create just this monster cube that has every possible fact and dimension in it. And it takes a long time to process. A user hooks into it with a reporting tool and they're confused. But I have all these, I don't know how all this stuff works together. I have all these measures. I don't know which dimensions go with them. You can't have a cube that big. You need to cut it. It not only helps with the users, but it helps with development um, because it, it, it's difficult to have more than one person develop on a cube. So if you have one giant cube, then one person is, is kind of serial in there, and, and you need to split it up into smaller cubes. But then again, you don't want to make them too small. I've seen clients who create cubes just for one report, and they have dozens of cubes over there that are satisfying just a dozen or so reports. 